Now listen. Get out of the way so I can pack this trunk. I told you you're not going to leave here. And I told you I am. Did you think I was kidding? But you have no reason for leaving me. I think I have a very good reason. You're acting like a child. Where did you think the money came from to live as we live? In the jewelry store? Yes, I thought so. That's why it's such a shock to realize I'm married to a crook. You always seemed willing enough to take whatever I gave you without worrying where the money came from. I didn't ask you for furs and clothes. No, but you took them. And now you're not willing to run a little risk for having them. I'm not willing to go to prison for the pleasure of owning a fur coat. Who said anything about your going to prison? You don't see any bars in front of my face. Well, not now, but they'll be there. Well, you'd better not have anything to do with putting them there. Who is this? Oh, just a moment. I'll switch you over. You'd like to see me in prison, wouldn't you? Oh, you know that isn't true. All I want is to get away from here. Oh, let go. You're hurting me. You try squealing on me and see what that gets you. Oh, I won't tell the police. You know me well enough for that. Will, aren't you going to ask the phone? Hello? Yes, Vic. Who? Myra's sister's on the phone. She's at the station. She wants to talk to Myra. Yeah, you take it. I'm busy. Who is it? Did you invite your sister to come here? Yes, I did. I've told you I don't want any of your family here. Well, when I found out about you, I wrote and told her not to come, but the letter was returned. She'd already started, I guess. Not only that, she's arrived. She's at the station now. Then that was Gloria. Why didn't you let me talk with her? Because I won't have her hanging around here. But we can't leave her waiting down at the station. I'm going down to get her. Oh, no, you're not. You're not going anywhere. Oh, but she's my sister. There's no lonesome here, no friends, nobody to talk to. Oh, please let her stay a few days. Yeah, just what I thought. You want to talk to her and then let her tell the police. Oh, don't be a fool, Clark. Do you think I want my sister to know I'm married to a crook? I know women when they start to blab to each other. You've got to get rid of her. Send her back home. I'll go back home with her. I'm going to the station right now. Oh, no, you're not. You never let me see anyone. I'm not taking any chances on your giving me away. I'll not be the one to do that. You'll give yourself away. Oh, you're crazy. They'll never get me. I found out about you. You gave yourself away to me. You'll slip up again. You don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. Every crook gets caught sooner or later. And you'll get yours. Shut up. Don't talk like that. It's bad luck. Well, you're afraid. Like every other criminal, you're a coward at heart. Clark, what are you going to do? I... I'm not afraid of you. You can't do anything to me. Don't be a coward, will you? You are a coward. That's why I'm not afraid of you. Sure That's why I... Coward, huh? oh, See the wonders of San Francisco from an easy chair, folks. Embark at Darrow, Fisherman's Wharf, Barbary Coast, and Chinatown, the largest Oriental settlement outside of China. All for the price of one dollar the round trip. Leaving immediately, folks, but if you hurry, you can make it. Here's one of them sightseeing buses, Herbert. Step right in, folks. You're hitting it right on the nose. Oh, you go to Chinatown? We don't miss a single chopstick. Wouldn't you rather go to a movie, Beulah? Shoot, no. We can do that in Muscatine. I want to see something exciting. I'll show you scenes that'll make your blood run cold. The main thing I want to see is one of them opium things. Well, I, I can't promise you one for a dollar, but I can put you in touch with a good hatchet man. Step right in, that'll be two dollars. I, I don't know, Beulah. It, it don't sound safe. Sure, Herbert. If we don't see a little wickedness when we're away from home, when will we see it? Come on. Uh, no. I promised on the altar to protect you, and my conscience won't consent. Oh, fiddle. You and your protect. I bet you'll take me to see another museum. 
Step right up, folks. Chinatown, a dollar round trip, the thrill of a lifetime. Bus going right out, ladies and gentlemen. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry? I've been sitting in that place 45 minutes. Well, just keep your seat, lady. The bus will be filled in a minute. Here's a nice seat somebody can have. Give me back my dog. Oh, but lady. I'm only taking this trip so that I can lecture about it to my pupils. I can't sit here all day. I have to see everything in San Francisco by 8 o'clock. Give me my money. Well, all right. But you'll regret this all semester. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. The thrill of a lifetime, Barbary Coast and Chinatown. The wonders of San Francisco, explained by a guy who knows all the answers, driven by a wide awake and alert chauffeur. All for the price of one dollar the round trip. All the wonders of San Francisco, a dollar the round trip. Excuse me. Street, that's in Chinatown. Chinatown, the largest oriental settlement outside of China. Is that far from here? Oh, it's about a mile. See the notorious Barbary Coast, Fisherman's Wharf, a dollar the round trip. There's a taxi stand across the street. I think I'll walk. You say it's about a mile? Yeah, pretty long walk with that suitcase. You better take a cab. Well, I... How much would it cost to go there in your bus? Listen, lady, this is a sightseeing bus. All the wonders of San Francisco, a dollar the round trip. But I don't want to see the wonders of San Francisco. I just want to go to Chinatown one way. Take me there for 50 cents? 50 cents? Oh, listen, lady. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bus going right out. Hurry, hurry. Okay, lady, get it. I suppose I may have my choice of seats. Yeah, just shop around. Then I'll sit up front with the driver. It's too lonely back there. On our way, Puss. Where is he? Fulton. Oh. Bus full? They're hiding behind the seats. Oh, I think we can squeeze in a couple more. Bus chartered for a private tour of San Francisco. Remember, I can only pay to see Chinatown. Well, there's no extra charge for looking out the window on the way. World famous Market Street. The main artery for the lifeblood of San Francisco's traffic. Do you think those things up, or is it all written out for you? Just a gift oratory, maybe a little help from the Chamber of Commerce on the side. Hey, McGillicuddy. What's that? Is it a statue? No, it's a guy with a beard. Oh, is that a new version of an old game? Yeah, we play it every day to see who buys the beer. And he always wins. Does he? Yeah, after a few beers, I can't say McGillicuddy. Does any beard count? And he sent a whiskers down to here as a McGillicuddy. And down to here is a Hessenbach, er, Hessenbach. It's a guy with a muffler. <laughs> he is, as you may have gathered, a Hessenbach. That counts six beers. What about one down to uh, here? Oh, that's 12 beers. I suppose you call him Santa Claus. No, there ain't no Santa Claus. Well, any guy with a beard longer than his necktie is a hot and hot potentate. What? Hot and hot potentate. Well, it, it don't make no difference. We ain't never seen one anyhow. You can see plenty out where I come from. Where's that? Salt Lake City. Oh, you're one of them morons. Oh, is that the new bridge across the Golden Gate? No, that's the one to Oakland. The other one's up for there. I love to spit off high bridges. I got 10 days for that once. Come all the way from Salt Lake just for the chop suey? No, to visit my sister. I know a lot of sisters in Chinatown. Who's yours? I doubt if you know Myra. She's married to a man who owns a jewelry store there. His name is Durier. Know him? No, I don't. Who did you say? Durier. Claude Durier. Why, do you know him, Puss? Oh, no, no. I, I know where the store is. It's on a side street off Grand. That's right, Nanking Street. We're now coming up to the Embarcadero, where ships from the Seven Seas come to rest. Well, I'll go further. I'll make it eight seas. Go right with me if you make it nine. Yeah, and I'll throw in the Atlantic and Pacific. So your sister's married to one of the Durier boys? Yes, the older one. Myra hasn't been home since she's been married, so I've never met them. If you were my sister, I'd have met you at the station. Well, she meant to. My train was over an hour late, so I guess we missed each other. What did you get for her? Oh, I did. Couldn't get her, though. So I'm going on out anyway. Say, isn't that truck going to get out of the way? Oh, I never worry when I'm driving. Hey, look out. Pull over. We nearly hit him. Uh, I knew he was yellow. Come on, I'm down. I smell fish. It ain't me. That's intuition. We're now approaching.
Fishing Fisherman's Wharf, home of every variety of seafood. You hungry? I can hold out till Friday. I'll buy you some shrimps. They sell them in a bag like peanuts. It's all the same to you. I'll take the peanuts. Over there, you see all the Portuguese fishing boats, just in from the morning's catch. What nationality are the seagulls? I never got close enough to see, but I'll find out for you. Here's my card, Eddie Barton. It's printed. Don't rub your fingers over it. I won't. If I call up and find out when you want to go, who will I ask for? You must be specific. Ask for Mrs. Jurier's sister. Which one? I give in. Ask for Gloria what? There's the Royal Hawaiian. Yeah, that's where Puss will buy me seven beers. Yeah, if I don't beat you in a petentot, or petentot, or potentate. Folks, we are now entering Chinatown, the largest oriental settlement outside of China. I wonder why it is we think all Chinese run laundry. Oh, probably for the same reason we think the English have no sense of humor. Have they? What's that building? Well, that's the Chinese theater. The place is six hours long and you smell punk in your clothes for days afterwards. Three hoss and peppers. Oh, now you know pictures don't count. You get off the next corner after this. I'm afraid you lost money on me. I never had such a long ride for 50 cents. For how much? Oh, well, what's money? Inflation's just around the corner. It's been a swell sightseeing tour. Hey, uh, McGillicuddy. And no picture. That's practically a hoss and pepper. I know it, but I couldn't remember it. Anyway, I couldn't hold six beers. You could collect them in installments. Yeah, for Royal Hawaii. Sure, available on demand. That's good to know. Well, thanks for some thrilling driving, Mr. Oldfield. My Daphne's her name. Just call me Puss. I used to know a man named Ted. Oh, no relation. Well, here's the 50 cents, and thanks a lot, Mr. Barton. Make it, Eddie, after all we've been through together. Well, so long, if I ever enlist in the Foreign Legion, it'll be on account of you. Goodbye! You know, Puss? Yeah, I know. She's got my head going around the same way. But not as fast. She's just what my first wife thought she was. Hey, don't you think somebody ought to take this wheel? Hello, baby. What a nice ride you, Penny. No, he wants to die. Oh, see you payday, Ming Toy. Now, everyone should think about the future. Now, if you take this policy, your future will be thinking for you. <clears throat> How? I, uh, well, <laughs> that's what I'm supposed to say to people that I hope are going to take out the insurance. <laughs> what does that mean, the future will be thinking for you? Oh, uh, <clears throat> well, you see, uh, <clears throat> Uh, it only goes to show, uh, records prove... <laughs> Let me tell you about our 20 payment endowment. Does the future think for me in that one? Well, well, it's a very attractive policy. Then you take one. May I help you? Finish with your customer. No, he's no customer. I'm his, he <laughs> thinks. Yeah. You better take another course before you come back. <laughs> oh, gee, thank you. Glad to meet you. <laughs> Good day. The future will be thinking for you. The future will be thinking of you. Well, I'm not a customer either. I'm Myra's sister, Gloria. Oh, how do you do? I'm Victor, Clark's brother. So we're relatives. So we are. Myra told me about you and her letters. Well, I wish she'd told me more about you. Is Myra home? I telephoned her, but we were cut off, I guess. Well, our phone's been out of order, but uh, I'll take you up there now. They live over the store, you know, right this way. I haven't seen Myra since early this morning. I suppose she's up there. Will it be all right to leave the store? Sure, for a minute. Hasn't she got wonderful eyes, Puss? One of them was good. I didn't see the other one. It was all right, too. You know, Eddie, I like a girl with two good eyes.
Hello, Clark. Oh, hello, Vic. Clark, this is Gloria, Myra's sister. Oh, yes. Come right in and make yourself at home. Uh, Vic, better get back down to the store. Sure. Oh, Gloria, why don't you have lunch with me? Why, yes, thanks. If Myra has no other plans. Oh, swell. Right this way. Look out for my brother. He's a fast worker. Oh, he's nice. So sorry no one was at the station to meet you. Didn't Myra go down? I thought we missed each other. Oh, this is a little embarrassing. I, to tell the truth, Myra and I had a sort of row. Well, nothing serious, of course, but, well, you know how married people are. Well, just from hearsay. <laughs> I suppose they're all alike. One says something thoughtless and the other resents it, and then before you know it, there you are. But where is she? Do you mean Myra isn't here? She walked out on me and hasn't come back. But she knew I was coming. Well, I had a letter from her asking me to visit her. I know, I know. That's why I'm so embarrassed that Myra should be treating you this way. Well, when do you think she'll be back? I don't know. I don't even know when she left. <laughs> you see, uh, we quarreled the night before last, and I went to sleep at a hotel. When I came here yesterday to patch things up with a little present, uh, an emerald bracelet that Myra had wanted, she was gone. But your brother Vic said he saw her this morning. Oh, did he? Good, good. Well, then perhaps she came back to get some of her belongings. You see, uh, I was out on business all morning. I, I don't know what to do. Uh, Myra invited me here to spend a couple of weeks. Oh, that's quite all right. You stay right here in her room. I have to run down to Sacramento on business for a few days, but uh, my brother Vic will be glad to show you around. But I don't know whether he'd want to. I just met him. Oh, he'll be glad of the opportunity. Besides, Myra may be back any moment. Well, that's true, but... Oh, now, don't worry about anything. <laughs> Just make yourself comfortable. I'll get this trunk out of your way. It's going into storage anyway. Oh, don't bother. Suppose I just go to a hotel, so I won't put you to any trouble. <laughs> well, then Myra will be angry when she comes back. Well, if you're sure it won't inconvenience you. Now, unpack and get ready for your luncheon date. Uh, make Vic take you to some place fancy. Well, the only place I know is the Royal Hawaiian. Well, it isn't far from here, and uh, it's amusing. I know. Have you any idea where Meyer might have gone? Not the slightest. Well, you see, she has so many friends here in San Francisco and Del Monte, but he promised not to worry about it. All right, I won't. Tell your brother I'll be right down. Don't hurry. thing a guy can do, make the mistake of falling for one dame at a time. What should he do, wait for the quintuplets to grow up and then fall for them all at once? Better take too long. Never wait for women. Hey, you ain't ready for that fourth beer I owe you, are you? Sure, but I'm not a bit thirsty. Hey, what should a guy do? Fall for about three dames at once? Oh, no. Two's enough if you pick two good ones. Now, I make a parlay with a blonde and a brunette and then play one against the other. Does it work? Oh, no. They both always praise me for a sucker. over there. Hey, boy, there's your answer to knee action. Hey, do you see what I see, or have I got an attack of the visions? Will you step this way, please? 
go to the bar and have a drink before we eat. Say, you're all right. I'm going to enjoy showing you the town. She's come over here. Yeah, hey, that's a good sign, isn't it? Well, it all depends. If I could just see one McGillicuddy for luck. Mm, the alcoholic rendezvous. I hoped I'd find you here. We've been hoping to be found. Mr. Durier, these are the friends I was telling you about. Oh, so I imagined. Hello. How are you? This is Eddie Barton, and this is Pussy. Yeah, he knows me. Oh, does he? That's fine. Yeah, just swell. Will you have a drink with us before we find a table? Oh, no, this is on me. I owe Miss Watkins a drink. You owe me six drinks. It was almost a hus and pfeffer. That's right. Six beers for the young lady. Well, I'll settle for one. I don't like beer very well. All this is very mystifying to me. Well, this is just a little game we let Miss Watkins in on. Oh, I see. Well, may I suggest a Royal Hawaiian special? They're very good here. You mean I ain't buying? Hey, make mine the same with a double shot of whatever goes in it. Three specials. And what for you, Mr. Barton? Beer. I'm trying to learn to like it. Well, did you find your sister all right? Why, uh, no. She wasn't there. She would. Could you come over to the jewelry store this afternoon? Sure, I'm off at five for a couple of hours. There's something I want to talk to you about. Okay, I'll talk about anything but the election. It's a date. <laughs> Sorry to rush Miss Watkins away, but we'll have to have lunch and get back to the store. Sure. Hey, don't forget our date. How could I when I'm the one who made it? There's something in that. Well, goodbye, Mr. Barton. Thanks for the drink. So long, McGaffey. Nice to see you again. Yeah, wonderful. Sorry, we can't stay long enough to sing Sweet Adeline. Waiter. You gotta be careful of a dame with a sense of humor. Stay away from that one. I'll stay away from her till five this afternoon. You better make it a year from this afternoon. Why? She not only cracks wise, but she's related to them Durier brothers. Just by marriage. Yeah, that's the only thing that's legal about either one of them. They're two of the biggest crooks in this town. What? You know that jewelry store? Yeah. Well, that's a front. That's a fence for the hottest stuff in this town. Hey, how do you know? Oh, listen, pal, I ain't been a bus driver all my life. I can tell that by your driving. Hey, I've had dealings with that mob. Then the cops caught up to me. I'm only out now on good behavior. Are you trying to tell me that Gloria is mixed up with those crooks? Sure I am. At least her sister is. And if she ain't now, she will be. You keep as far away from that store as you can get. I'm not going to wait till 5. As soon as I get rid of these rubbernecks, I'm going over there and tell her what kind of a joint she's got herself into. Okay, it's your own funeral. I'll make it a double feature. You're going with me. Well, did you have a nice time? Yes, we had lunch at the Royal Hawaiian, and Victor drove me up to Twin Peaks afterwards. Have you heard from Myra? No, not yet, but uh, she'll, she'll turn up any minute now. Uh, Gloria, why don't you run on upstairs? And I'll be up after a while to see if there's anything you want. All right. Clark. Well? What is it? She's worried about her sister. Did Maya really leave you? I'm afraid so. Then why don't you want Gloria to see her? Listen, Vic. You might as well know. Myra got wise to our racket. That's why she left me. Now, I don't think she'd squeal on us, but uh, if those two get together, the kid might find out. So I'm taking no chances until we get all the hot stuff out of the store. Then we better not let her keep a date this afternoon. What date? Well, we ran into Puss McGaffey and a friend of his over at the Royal Hawaiian. She knew them. I gave her a lift down here this morning in the bus. McGaffey have anything to say? No, but she asked the other guy to come and see her this afternoon. I don't know what about. 
Better show her around the town and forget to bring her back on time. Yeah, what if she wants to wait for him? Oh, tell her he phoned. He couldn't make it. <laughs> hey, that's him now. He's early. I'll get rid of him. Uh, show Gloria the view from the roof instead. <laughs> Good afternoon. Is there something I can do for you? Yeah, you can show me how to find Miss Watkins. She asked me to meet her here. Oh, yes, yes. She left a message for you. She said she was sorry, but she wouldn't be able to keep her appointment. Well, that's funny. She said she had something important to tell me. <laughs> it couldn't have been very important. She went out shopping with her sister this afternoon. I believed you till you pulled that one. Come on, I want to talk to her. I've told you she won't be able to see you today. Don't give me that about her being with her sister. I happen to know her sister isn't here. Now, I don't want to have any trouble with you. You can avoid it by getting out of here. Maybe you can see her tomorrow. I'd rather see her today. How do you get up to her apartment? Now, take it easy. Customers aren't allowed in the back room. I'm not a customer. Let go, mister. Do you know who you're talking to? I don't know who, but I got a pretty good idea of what. Why you? If you make a move, I'll get you, too. Oh, I'm sorry. But it only goes to prove that you should always give a thought to the future. What's the trouble here? Why, well, these bandits tried to hold up the store. I shot one of them when they tried to make a getaway. What? We're not bandits. Hey, get a doctor for puss. Shut up. We'll have plenty of time to listen to your story. I don't recognize you, officer. You're not on the Chinatown detail, are you? I'm off the Stockton Street beat. This is my first day on the force. Where's your phone? Right here. I passed here on my way home, saw those two fellas hanging around out in front. Is this one of their gang? I don't know. Why, why no, no, Mr. Jury. I, I just came back to tell your brother what your future will be thinking for you means. 137, King Street. Send the wagon around. Couple of stick-up men. It's an ambulance you need, not the wagon. And Drury ain't the guy you want to pinch. Pipe down. Better send an ambulance around. One of them stop the slug. Well, I might as well go if nobody wants to take a policy. Wait a minute. Don't let him go. He's the only one that saw what really happened. Drury ain't shot puss when he came in to help me, didn't he? I, well, I'm kind of nearsighted. We'll find out down the station whether you saw anything or not. You're coming along as a material witness. But, but listen, I, I told my wife I'd try and sell his policy and come right home. And, and my wife gets awfully unhappy if I don't come home when she expects me. And, and when she's unhappy, it makes me unhappy. Look, over there's Goat Island. And you can see Berkeley. Don't you think we should go downstairs and see what's going on? Oh, we'll go down in a little while. I want you to see everything while you're up here. Now, It'll soon be time for Eddie. I'm going down in the store and wait. Puss, are you hurt bad? Make a run for it when I give you the chance. Come on, break it up, you two. Get out. Uh, give me a lift, flat foot. Come on. Beat it, kid. Come to him. I'll get this. What's up here? Arrest the guy inside and hold the witness. I'm going to get him. Go inside. Is that the only ship sailing tonight? All right. Reserve an outside stateroom, first class, for Mr. Stephen Allenby. No, no, Mr. Allenby will not share the stateroom with anybody. Sole occupant. 214B deck? Thank you. Mr. Allenby will pay the purser when he comes aboard.
Farrell, hello. <laughs> you missed a lot of excitement. What happened? We heard shooting. I should say you did. Two hoodlums tried to hold up a store. Fortunately, we always keep a gun behind the counter for just such emergencies. I managed to hold them off until the police arrived. Looks like your friend isn't going to show up. Oh, he'll be here. Something must have happened to make him this late. Well, there's no use wasting the evening. Let's go up to the Mark Hopkins and have some cocktails before dinner. Leave word for him to join us. No, thanks. I'd rather wait. Well, maybe he won't show up at all. Well, I'll wait just the same. Besides, Meyer might come back her phone, and I'd like to be here when she does. Hello, Pacific Transfer Company. Will you send a truck over to pick up some baggage? 137 Nanking Street. Yes. Uh, one truck and several suitcases. A man will be here to tell him where to take them. Oh, about half an hour? Well, that'll be fine. Having dinner, Mr. Barton? No, I just want to use your phone. China, 47303. Jewelry Company? Yes, speaking. Oh, hello, officer. I just caught the bandit that got away. Well, that's excellent work, officer. Yeah, I just thought you'd like to know. Yeah. Oh, well, isn't that dandy? I didn't expect no reward. Well, you're certainly entitled to it, officer. They're dangerous criminals. Sure, sure, anything I can do to help. Well, uh, is that necessary? I know, but uh, can't you do it yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll come right over. What's wrong? Oh, that dumb rookie cop wants me to come over to the station and sign a complaint against those guys. Are you going? I'll have to. We don't want the Chinatown Bulls back here asking a lot of questions before we're ready for them. Do you think McGaffey's likely to squeal on us? Suppose he does. His word's no good. They have his record. You keep them both out of trouble for a long time. I wish I had your nerve. Not nerve, brains. <laughs> By the way, I uh, phoned the transfer company to pick up uh, Myra's trunk. If they come before I get back, ask them to wait. I won't be long. Isn't it about time to close up? Yes, but don't leave before I get back. Uh, why don't you take uh, Gloria out to dinner somewhere? Oh, swell. Say, does Myra know she's here? No, I didn't tell her. Well, it's getting dark. Better turn on the window lights.
Didn't frighten you, did I? A little. I came down to see if Eddie had called. No, not a word. Don't you think you'd better break that date and let me take you out to dinner? Maybe I will. Wonder why Meyer didn't take her trunk with her. Oh, clock sending it to her. Then he does know where she is. Why didn't he tell me? Uh, at least uh, that's what I suppose. Or, uh, or perhaps Meyer is sending someone for it. Oh? Who's Stephen Allenby? Allenby? I don't know why. His name's on Myra's trunk. Oh, oh, Allenby. Oh, oh, he handles lots of business for us. I'll go and get ready to go out. Oh, take your time. I can't leave till Clark gets back anyway. Where did he go? Oh, he went down to the police station to sign a complaint against the bandits. Oh. What do you want? Open up. Well, who are you, the transfer man? Uh, yeah. Oh, why didn't you say so? Come on in. Glad to see you. So am I. Oh, I was afraid you wouldn't come. You know, I did have a little trouble getting here. Uh, <laughs> hey, you haven't changed a bit. Changed? You know, I haven't seen you for about three whole hours. Oh, well, it's harder to realize that I never saw you at all before noon today. Well, that's long enough. Say, have you heard from your sister yet? Oh, no, and I'm terribly worried. Her husband said she left two days ago, and Victor said he saw her this morning. I don't know what to think. They're both a couple of crooks. One of them shot Puss and then told the cops we were hold-up men. Shot him? You mean he's dead? No, but he might be badly hurt. They've got him in jail now. Well, Clark told me the store was held up, but I had no idea it was you and Puss. And look. I found this letter on the floor. And listen to this part. I'm sending my trunk on ahead. Don't worry, Mother, but I'm half afraid Clark may try to keep me from leaving. What do you make of that? Now, whose trunk is that in the hall downstairs? Well, it has a tag on it addressed to Stephen Allenby, but it's Myra's. It has her initials on it. Let's get out of here. As soon as Dorie finds out the cops didn't call him, he'll be back. I'm afraid I've gotten us both in trouble. We're in trouble, all right, but I don't believe that about you being afraid. I would be if you weren't here. Say, if I think I hear a burglar, I want to hide under the bed. <laughs> I'll bet you'd grab him by the foot. Wait a minute. If we try to run away, they're liable to arrest you. Wouldn't it be better if we went down to the police station and told them the truth about everything? What if they still believe Drury? They'll hold me and let him get away. That's right. Of course, we don't really know anything has happened to Myra. I'll feel easier when I see her and know she's all right. Oh, 
Oh, Eddie, I'm so sorry to have dragged you into this mess. I kind of like it. Puts me closer to you. Even if we did just meet today, we're pretty old friends, aren't we? You don't know how glad I am I took your bus today. Me too. Say, I wasn't going to let you get away from me if I had to carry you all over California for 50 cents. So now we know where we stand with each other. Yeah. It's a swell place to stand. Shh. What is it? Didn't you hear something over there by the dresser? Say, quick. Start the phonograph. Play dumb. I'll hide behind the drapes. Maybe we'll find out something. Now, now. Don't get excited. Someone locked the door to this door, and I have to use the back entrance. Well, I'm not excited. I'm just surprised to see there's a secret package there. Just like in the mystery stories. <laughs> yes, yes. It's left over from the old days. This building used to be a Chinese gambling house before we rebuilt it. Uh, not leaving, is I? Oh, no. Uh, that is, uh, well, I thought I'd go back home if I don't hear from Myra soon. Well, aren't you comfortable here? Can't be comfortable anywhere until I know where she is. Well, I think you're making quite a lot out of an unimportant quarrel. It was important enough that she left here, even though she was expecting me. Well, you'll see her all right. Uh, where's my brother? I don't know. Isn't he down in the store? I'll see. The front door is locked. You know, uh, if Myra hadn't intended to come back, she'd have taken her clothes with her. Look, they're still in the closet. Are they? I hadn't noticed. Just a closet, and there's no secret passage there. You've done something to my sister. I know you have. Well, if you ever want to see her again, you'd better shut up. Don't worry, honey. I'll get you out. out in a minute. There it is. Take it to Pier 45, the Brazilian Iron Docks. Pier 45? Yes, and you haven't got too much time before the boat sails. Just take it to the pier and wait for me. How long? Well, I'll be right down there, 15 or 20 minutes. Here. Hey, that's a ten spot. It's yours. Watch that trunk until I get there. I sure will. Must have the crown jewels in it. Well, I'll give you another five at the docks. But be sure you go straight there and wait for me. Check. For 15 bucks, I'll let you strap it on my back. Hey, it's heavy, ain't it? Yes, uh, yes, books. Mostly books, law books. I didn't think they had enough laws to weigh this much. Come on. Who tied you up? McGaffey's friend, he's upstairs. <laughs> well, I might have known he was the one that made the phony call. 
Get me down to the police station. Hey, what's the idea of taking all the cash? Are you trying to run out on me? Oh, you know me better than that, Vic. Oh, no, I don't. Things are happening pretty fast around here. Well, it'll happen a lot faster if we don't stop that kid before he gets out of here. Come on, let's go. Now, be very quiet and don't make a sound. Are you hurt, Eddie? No. Aren't you scared at all? Me? I got goose pimples the size of duck eggs all over me. So have I. It'd be fun, though, if I wasn't so worried about Myra. Ah! Oh, what is it? Is that a mouse? Yeah. Yeah, about the size of a police dog and probably just as hungry. She's locked in here. What did you do that for? I'm going to make her tell where that guy's hiding. Dirty rats taking the hinges out. They probably saw you come in through the panel and have gone out that way. Here, take this gun and go after them. What do you expect me to do? Keep them from getting to the police. Well, where are you going? Back to see if they're hiding under the stairway. Hurry up. Oh, they're probably out by now. <laughs> Not if they went that way. The door at the end of the passage is locked. Yeah, so is the closet. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see anybody take the hinges off that steel door. Why, they couldn't open it with a battering ram. Go on. Wait a minute. Don't you try to double-cross me. Why, Victor, what do you mean? Do I have to tell you? You just took all the dough out of the safe, didn't you? Which reminds me. What happened to those diamonds in the black pouch? You told me to keep them under cover. Well, I did. Where nobody will find them. Well, all right. Now take care of that kid. I'll meet you in the store. Uh, Ouch! Oh, wish I had a flashlight. Maybe it's just as well we can't see what this place looks like. Whew. Hasn't been any ventilation in here since the white man first came to California. <gasps> What's that? It's the phantom of an old Chinese opera. Well, I don't mind ghosts. It's these vermin that turn my blood to ice water. There's got to be a door here somewhere. Jurier came in this way. I wonder what sort of place this was. Looks like Dracula's dining room. Maybe it's part of the old Chinatown before the earthquake. What earthquake? You mean the fire. You see any more of those overstuffed rats? No. What happened? Just a little cave-in. Probably have to dig our way out. This would be a great place for a Halloween party. It's a great place to get out of in a hurry. Yeah, let's let's try this way. <laughs> this must be the door. Can you open it? I'm trying to find a knob. Oh, of all the tough breaks. What's the matter? It's locked, and worse than that, it's steel. What are we going to do? Go back. We're in a trap. Here, give me your hand. I'm not saying Durier bumped off his wife. She just ain't anywhere to be found. Listen, guys. Honest, I'm not trying to pull anything over on you. How could I and me in here? Well, what are you trying to do? I'm just trying to make you guys go over to that jewelry store and grab those guys. How do you know that store's a fence? Oh, never mind. All you'll have to do is take a look around. You'll find jewelry in that store hot enough to curl your hair. If you're lying, McGaffey, it'll be just too bad. You've done one stretch already. Oh, why do I have to argue with you guys? They may be putting that girl on the spot right now. Don't forget, it was this guy that tripped me up and let his buddy get away. Did he get away? Oh. I chased him through every alley in Chinatown, but I'll pick him up yet. Come on, we go over and check or not? Won't do any harm to run down there. Okay, fellas, you'll probably get promoted for this. You'll use all your influence, won't you? Come on. And if the day that I could go home. And you don't want to go? Yes, I want to go, but I have to walk all the way back to where I parked my car and my feet hurt. You mean you've been parked on Nanking Street all this time? Yes, sir. That's a 45-minute parking zone. I'll have to give you a ticket for that. 
Come on, General Butler. Uh, do you ever think about the future? No, I asked him once already. Someone is following us. That's what I was afraid of, but I didn't like to mention it. What now? You go back there out of sight. I'll jump him, and when I do, you run up through the store and call the cops. Can go you on. Handle him alone? He doesn't turn out to be another Max Schmelling. Into your corner. Where are you going? Hey, this is the one that got away. Oh. I can broke in again. How's that for brass? Don't fall for that gag again. He's lying to cover something up. I'm no bandit. I catch him robbing my safe and he's no bandit. Listen, he's trying to bluff you. There's been a crime committed here. What kind of a crime? Well, I, I don't know exactly, but a woman disappeared from here. What woman? Well, this guy's wife. You see, I know her sister and... Hey, well, where's the girl that called you, fellas? What girl? Well, the girl who... D didn't you see a girl with big blue eyes that... D didn't she... Uh, I better go take a look for her. Come back here. But I gotta find her. Find who? The sister of the woman who's disappeared. Now she's disappeared. What's all this about disappearing dames? Do you know? I haven't the slightest idea what he's talking about. Say... Which one of you guys is lying? Well, you missed your boat. What do you want? He missed his boat. What boat? Where were you going? I don't know what he's talking about. He's drunk. Drunk? Is that any way to talk to a pal? I'm no pal of yours. Sure you are. Didn't you give me a ten spot to haul your trunk to the dock? Only a pal would do that. What's all this about? What trunk and what doc? Well, he's either crazy or he's confusing me with my brother. Where is your brother? He's back in the secret passage. I'm brother. not asking you. So your brother's sailing somewhere tonight. Well, yes, uh, yes, he hoped to get away, but uh, if this man says that he... Uh... Was you? Think hard, pal. You said to take the trunk to pier. Never mind. I'm sure my brother intended for you to wait at the pier until he showed up. Don't you see what this guy's doing? He's trying to pass it off on his brother so he can make a getaway. Will you pipe down? What about this brother of yours? Where is he sailing for? A vacation trip. Honolulu, I think, unless he's changed his plans. Evidently, this transfer man got us mixed up. You don't look much alike. Wasn't it you I was talking about the trunk being so heavy? And you said it was full of law books. Oh, you must remember me. Of course I don't remember you. I never saw you before. Oh. What pier did you take the trunk to? Pier 45. That's not the Matson line. I know it. It's the Brazilian line. Brazil, huh? Why do you suppose he's leaving for South America? You seem to be doing all the talking. You tell me why. Well, I don't know why, but wait a minute. 
He's trying to get rid of that trunk for some reason. If he ships it somewhere, there's always the danger of tracing it back to him. Did you check it under his name at the pier? I didn't check it any place. It's outside on my truck right now. I'll go and see if it is my brother's trunk. Hey, stop that guy! Wait a while! Get out of the way, you... Get out of the way, you... Find that brother. Hunt for a secret passageway. I'll get the squad car. Yeah, but there's hardly no gas in it. I know! Hey, there's no insurance. There's no O'Connor, we'll get him out. Joe, come here. See what I found.
kid was certainly right. Close it up. We've opened your trunk, Mr. Dorier. to prove it to. 